Welcome friends to another lecture on the teacher on demand series. This lecture is in immune hematology and this lecture is on AB in RH antibody titers. This has been requested by a person who is subscribing my channel and I have made it in response to the request. I also take this opportunity to say that all the pictures in this presentation have been downloaded from the internet and I thank the people who have uploaded it on the net. Now let's understand the RH blood group system. The RH blood group system is made up of protein antigens which consists of three group of protein the C, D and E of which the D is the most important antigen. Those who express the D antigens are called RH positive and those who do not express the D antigens are called RH negative. Antibodies that are developed in the RH group system are usually of the IgG class. These antigen antibodies are not always present and they develop only when a person is exposed to the antigen. This usually occurs in blood transfusions of RH negative people with RH positive persons. That is the time the RH negative person gets an exposure to the RH antigen and then starts to develop antibodies. It also occurs during pregnancies. Because the class of the RH antibodies is IgG in nature and it can cross the placenta, it has a significant uh, impact on pregnancy and that's what we are going to discuss today. Now, let us look at some of the pregnancy outcomes. Case 1, where the RH, uh, father is an RH negative person and the mother is an RH positive person. The child could either be RH negative or RH positive. If the child is RH negative, there is no problem in the pregnancy because the child does not have the RH antigen. In case the child is RH positive, then also there is no problem because the mother is RH positive, she would recognize the RH positive on the child as self and not mount antibodies against it. Now let's look at the case 2. When the father is RH positive and the mother is RH negative, the child could be RH positive or negative. If the child is RH negative, then there is no problem. But if the child is RH positive and the mother is RH negative, then we have a potential for a big problem. Now, what is the problem? The mother will detect the RH positive antigen in the child. Because she does not have the antigen in her, she will consider it as foreign. She will develop antibodies against this RH antigen. The antibodies are IgG in class, so they can cross the placenta and destroy the child. Once again, the mother is RH negative, the child is RH positive, the mother identifies the RH positive antigen as foreign, she develops antibodies against them, the antibodies formed is IgG class, so it can cross the placenta and enter the developing child and start destroying the child. And now let's look at the various pregnancy outcomes. If the father is RH positive and the mother is RH positive, pregnancy no problem. If the father is RH negative, mother is RH positive, as we had discussed, even then there will be no problem. If both the father and the mother are negative, then also there's going to be no problem because there is no RH antigens. In these two conditions, the mother considers the RH positive as self antigens. In this condition, the child will not be RH positive, so there is no problem. The only problem comes when the father is RH positive and the mother is RH negative. Does ABO blood group incompatibility also cause similar problems? The answer is no. Why? because the ABO antibodies are IgM class. IgM class of antibodies are big, five times the size of an IgG, and these cannot cross the placenta. So when you have an ABO incompatibility, like the father A and the mother B, then the pregnancy and the child is a different blood group, still the pregnancy will not be affected. Why? Because the class of the antibodies is IgM. What was the problem we had? We had a problem when the mother was RH negative, the father was RH positive, 
and the child was is RH positive. If the child is RH negative, there is no problem. The problem comes when the mother is negative, the father is positive, and the child is also positive. Now, usually in the first pregnancy, no such problem occurs. At the time of childbirth, some amount of blood from the child enters into the mother's system. This is the first time that the mother gets exposed to the RH positive antigen and she starts to develop antibodies. During the second pregnancy, assuming that the second child is also positive, the antibodies from the mother cross the placenta, identify the child's RH positive antigen as foreign and starts developing. Now let me once again say that during the first pregnancy, usually no problem occurs. At the time of delivery, some amount of blood from the child enters the mother's system and then sensitizes the mother. The mother then gets exposed to the RH positive antigen and develops antibodies against it. In the second pregnancy, assuming that the child is RH positive, this antibodies from the mother will pass through the placenta. Why? Because it is IgG in nature. It will cross the placenta, identify the RH antigen of the child as foreign and go on to produce more and more antibodies to destroy the child. And what we get? We get a condition called erythroblastus vitalis where the child is born severely injured and dead. A milder form of this may be that the child has severe jaundice at the time of birth. Now, when does sensitization occur? As I said before, most of the chances that sensitization occurs at the time of delivery. Nowadays, we are doing certain procedures during pregnancy called amniocentesis, where we poke a needle through the uterus into the child to get some material. This is the time also sensitization can occur. During any obstetric procedures done during pregnancy, sensitization can occur. Another rare condition, a mother getting DU positive blood previously can al could also have sensitized her. Now, what is RH antibody titers D and how do we do them? During the first antenatal visit of a pregnant lady, it is routine to do a blood group test of the, of the lady. If the blood group test of the lady is negative, then we have to check the blood group of the father. If the blood group of the father is positive, then only we need to check up whether the mother has antibodies against the RH antigen or not. Once again, during the first visit of the child to the of the pregnant lady to the doctor, we get her blood group done. If the blood group is negative, the second thing we need to do is check the blood group of the father. Only when the blood group of the father is positive and the ne mother negative, then we need to see whether the mother has any irregular antibodies or not. Any antibodies against the RH antigens or not. This is done by doing the indirect Coombs test. Now what is the indirect Coombs test? We incubate the mother's serum with pooled O positive cells. The O positive cells will give us the RH antigen and it also doesn't have the A or the B antigen so mismatch reactions will not occur. What do we do? We incubate the mother's serum with pooled O positive, RH positive cells. Then we wash the cells and put anti-human globulin and look for agglutination. If we get positive, if we get a positive result, then we do serial dilutions of the mother's serum to see at what dilution does the test change from positive to negative. Let me explain to you in various steps. Now this is the o pooled O positive cells. These are the RH antigens expressed on this pooled cells. This is the mother's serum which contains the antibodies against the RH antigens. We incubate them for a time and what do we get? We get the mother's antibodies coating the RH antigens on the O positive cells. The next step we add anti-human globulins. The anti-human globulins will bind to the mother's antibody and form a group, a mesh, which is called agglutination, 
which looks like this. In case the test is positive, we dilute the mother's sample through serial dilutions to a level where a positive test becomes negative. And this is then called the titer, the highest titer dilution that gives a positive re result is called the titer and this is how we estimate the anti RH antibody titer in a pregnant lady. Now this is a crude method now, uh, nowadays we have gel card systems if the antibody titers are high the RBCs are on the top if there is no antibodies the RBCs settle down and if you have varying titers of antibodies you can get a pattern from mild to severe like this. So this is how we can nowadays test the uh, test the antibody titers as 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus and 4 plus. Now what is the significance of the titer? If a test is positive we have to do dilutions till you find the antibody titer. Antibody titer is the highest dilution of the mother's serum which will still give a positive result. If the antibody titer is greater than 1 in 8 then this is considered as significant because lot of damage can occur to the child. If the titers are lower than 1 in 8 let the pregnancy continue. If the titers are higher than 1 in, one in 8 then we have to look for, the <coughs> look for an early delivery of the child and manage the child accordingly. In case it is not possible to deliver the child early then nowadays we have what is called fetal blood transfusion. With the help of a syringe you can identify the umbilical cord and inject good blood into the fetus just like a normal transfusion we do for thalassemic children and ensure that the pregnancy can continue to a time that the child will be uh, could survive delivery and save such children. Thank you very much for your listening and please feel, to, please feel free to contact me in my email id. I would also like to take your feedbacks about my lecture and if you have any request for lectures you could uh, pertain to laboratory medicine I would be very happy to make it for you. Thank you.